hello everyone welcome back so in earlier lecture i started new chapter that was about the analysis of stresses and strain and in that i explained about the stress of stress at a point and the stresses on inclined plane in today's lecture i will explain about the principal stress then two dimensional mohr circle for stress analysis and deformation and strain then stress of strain at a point so let us start so first thing is what is principal stress when total stress vector on a plane is directed along the normal to the plane the stress vector is called as principal stress which means the total stress vector direction on the plane is to the normal to the plane and the plane is called as principal plane there is no shear stress component on principal plane which means the shear stress is zero for the principal plane now for a given stress state there is only one set of three principal planes and only one set of three principal stresses acting on them so now again if we consider the earlier figure for some orientation of the inclined plane the shear stress component will become zero and the total stress vector on these planes would be directed in direction of their normal therefore in such cases the stress vector will be a scalar multiple of unit normal vector as given by the equation s is equal to sigma into n where sigma is a scalar multiple or magnitude of vector capital s consequently we have the component s1 s2 s3 of s which are given by the equation sigma into n1 sigma into n2 and sigma into n3 now substituting these values of component in the equations after rearranging the terms we get earlier there was equation in which we put this value so it will be sigma 1 1 minus sigma into n 1 plus sigma 2 1 into n 2 plus sigma 3 1 into n 3 the earlier equation was like this the sigma s1 is equal to sigma 1 1 into n1 the earlier equation for this was s1 is equal to sigma 1 1 into n1 so if we put the value of s1 we get s1 is equal to sigma into n1 so it will come on the other side and we will get the sigma 1 1 as the common and sorry sigma n1 will be common and sigma 1 1 minus sigma will be there so same way we can write for the three equations and if we take the n1 n2 n3 are the variable the three equations are linear homogeneous equation in n1 n2 n3 for a non trivial solution of this equation the determinant of coefficient of variable in this above three equation must be zero so the determinant of this will be zero for the condition to satisfy now the equation is the cubic equation of sigma and the three roots of this equation are the three principal 
stresses the three roots will be three principal stresses and the above equation after expanding the determinant and multiplying by minus 1 may be written as by this equation sigma cube minus 1 sigma square plus 2 into sigma minus 3 will be equal to 0. So, where 1, 2 and 3 are the coefficient of the equation and have the value given below the value of coefficient is given by this three equation where first is sigma 1 1 plus 2 2 plus 3 3 next is sigma 1 1 into 2 1 same way we minus sigma 1 2 2 3 and 3 1 and for third this is the equation uh, so the ultimate matrix will be given by for the third one is given by this sigma 1 1 into sigma so sorry sigma 1 1 sigma 2 1 sigma 3 1 sigma 1 2 sigma 2 2 sigma 3 2 sigma 1 3 sigma 2 3 and sigma 3 3 since there is only one set of three principal stresses therefore the equation must remain the same in irrespective of the change in coordinate system because it has to have the same three roots with the change of coordinate system the different stress component changes and however the coefficient 1 2 and 3 do not change hence this coefficient are called as invariants this three coefficient 1 2 and 3 are called as invariants because they do not change invariants of stress tensor this important quality of invariable any invariability of this coefficient is helpful in writing the constitutional equation of materials behavior the first invariant denotes that the sum of three normal stresses acting on three mutual perpendicular plane is invariant for a stress state this sum is also equal to the sum of three principal stresses now let us denote the principal stresses by sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 and they are illustrated in this figure where the sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 are shown this stress state is equivalent to one shown in this figure from which the principal stresses are derived however the direction of coordinate axis in the two cases are of course difference the direction coordinates are different so this is about the principal stresses now let us discuss about the more stress circle so the more stress circle which is the another method for determining the normal and shear stresses on an inclined plane is by a graphical construction popularly known as more stress circle or simple Morse circle. For the sake of simplicity, we take the coordinate axis of the principal stresses as shown in figure. Here you can see in the figure, for sake of simplicity, we take the coordinate axis along the principal stresses. So the principal stresses are 
sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 and we will take along that the axis x1 x2 and x3 you can see they are on the same x3 is opposite to x sigma 3 sigma 2 is opposite to x2 and s1 is opposite to x1 now the equation of the previous section we referred to this coordinate system so we use that equation so here n1 square plus n2 square plus n3 square is equal to 1 another equation is sigma 1 into n1 square plus sigma 2 into n2 square plus sigma 3 into n3 square will be equal to sigma n and same way if we multiply by sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 so if we add sigma s square on the other side so these three equations are taken from the previous and from above three equation we can solve for three variables n1 n2 and n3 n1 square n2 square and n3 we will take the determinant as this 1 1 1 sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma 1 square sigma 2 square and sigma 3 square is equal to delta we use these three equations and we will make a determinant for three variables n1 n2 and n3 so here the coefficient are 1 1 1 this coefficient sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 another coefficient sigma 1 square sigma 2 square sigma 3 square are written in the form of matrix now we can determine the value of n1 square n2 square and n3 square so first to find the n1 square is given by 1 upon delta which means this then 1 1 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma n here there is the second matrix is taken second part as we want to find n1 as we know that the Kramer's rule is applied over here so to apply Kramer's rule the 1 upon delta and the other uh, variable instead of n1 so n1 variables are cancelled other variables which means the 1 1 1 then sigma 2 sigma 3 and sigma n then sigma 2 square sigma 3 square sigma n plus n sigma n square plus sigma s square similarly we can find the n2 square and n3 square for the preparing n2 square we will cancel the n2 square from this and we will make the matrix from that again for preparing n3 we will cancel n3 from this and we will prepare the matrix the above equations for n1 square n2 square and n3 square can be written in the following form after the simplification these are the simplified form after the simplifying these equations so we will get the equations in the simplified manner now these equations are in fact equation of a circle if we take sigma n and sigma s as variable and for instance the circle corresponding to this equation it has its center at the center of this will be at 1 by 2 sigma 2 minus sigma 3 in and 0 the coordinate of the circle will be given by this and radius will be equal to n1 square into sigma 1 minus sigma 2 into sigma 2 minus sigma 3 here it will be sigma 1 then plus 1 by 4 sigma 2 minus sigma 3 square raised to 1 by 2 this will be the radius of that circle 
so we can represent this equation in the terms of circle so from that we can find a uh, stresses and strain now we will use this more circle for two dimensional purpose so the two dimensional more circle stress for stress representation the two dimensional case arise when the inclined plane is normal to x1 or x2 or x3 the inclined plane is so there was one inclined plane instead of that that is normal to any of the plane which is x y and z so or x1 x2 x3 for instance the let the plane be parallel to x1 so n1 will be x1 parallel to x1 so n1 will be 0 and the equation earlier we have seen will be converted into two dimensional more circle giving the relation between sigma 2 and sigma 3 and all the three two dimensional cases that arise when the inclined plane become parallel to one of the axes are discussed below when n1 is 0 the Morse stress circle equation will be given by sigma n minus 1 by 2 sigma 2 plus sigma 3 square plus sigma s square is equal to 1 by 4 sigma 2 minus sigma 3 square similarly for n2 is equal to 0 here there will be sigma 1 and sigma 2 here it will be sigma 1 sigma 2 other terms will remain same this is s for n this is n1 is equal to 0 for n3 is equal to 0 it will be uh, n3 here will be 0 so for that it will be sorry for 2 it will be 1 3 and 1 3 1 3 and 3 and sigma 1 3 and sigma 3 minus sigma 2 square for n 3 is equal to 0 sorry uh, for n2 is equal to 0 and for this n3 is equal to 0 this is for n1 is equal to 0 and here for last it will be sigma 1 plus sigma 2 and over here it will be sigma 1 minus sigma 2 remember this is in reverse sigma 3 minus sigma 2 sorry sigma 1 1 3 or uh, uh, another term from that paral parallel plane and the equation can be conveniently represented in the graphically as shown in the figure here there is one figure in which it is graphically shown x1 x2 then normal plane sigma n sigma s and there will be two components sigma 1 and sigma 2 and the graphical representation of the Mohr circle is given by this the sigma n versus sigma s curve normal stress versus shear stress so there will be with the change in the angle theta the value will be changing and the center will be having the coordinates as equal to this now uh, the therefore if we take n1 is equal to cos theta and n2 is equal to sin theta since n3 is equal to 0 so the normal stress on inclined plane becomes these are the earlier equations written normal plane will be equal to sigma n sigma 1 into n1 square while sigma 2 into n2 square as we have taken the normal strain is equal to cos square theta plus sin square theta there will be there and the 
above expression can be put in the following form by substituting value of cos square theta and sin square theta in the terms of cos 2 theta so it will be written as sigma n is equal to 1 by 2 sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 1 minus sigma 2 into cos 2 theta and the CS trace can be written in the similar terms sigma s is equal to 1 by 2 sigma 1 minus sigma 2 into sin 2 theta also the figure a shows the position of the inclined plane on which the stresses are to be find out and the this is our figure a on which the stresses we have to find is shown and the corresponding mode circle is drawn over here and the procedure to find out sigma n and sigma s from mode circle is as follow from the center o1 of the circle with center the center point will be having value sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 and 0 this will be the coordinate of the center and the radius radius for the same will be equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 this will be the radius of mode circle now take the radius o1 into p dash at angle 2 theta from the sigma n axis draw p dash n normal to the o o1 O1 को normal पे यहाँ पे draw किया है, then the stress on the plane is given by sigma s is equal to this is the equation p dash n which is equal to p dash into n, so it will be the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 1 by 2 uh, in, into sin 2 theta, so this will be the sin component so it will be this is the this is value is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 now the normal stress is given by the o n o n gives the normal stress and p dash n it gives the c s stress sigma s we have found now normal stress we have to find so normal stress which means this plus this value so we can find out the normal stress is equal to o2 o1 and o1 to n so o n is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 while o1 n is equal to cos theta sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 into cos 2 theta so similarly the other two dimensional more circle may be drawn corresponding to that equation and they corresponding to the case when the inclined plane are parallel to x2 and x3 respectively so this is about the more stress circle next topic is analysis of strain in which the first portion is the deformation so if on application of force particles of a deformable body change their relative position with the other to one another the body is said to be deformed However, if there is no change in the relative position of the particle with respect to each other, the body is said to be rigid and any motion which may constitute of translation or rotation of its particle is governed by laws of rigid body motion. Let a body deform occupy a region G in space de designed by Cartesian orthogonal system of coordinates any particle capital P of the body is assigned a set of three coordinates x1 x2 x3 and after deformation the body occupies new region that is G dash and the particle P gets the new position that is P dash and given by the another set of coordinates x1 x2 x3 similarly any other particle of the undeformed body occupies a unique position in the deformed state so there is one to one correspondence between 
positions of particle in undeformed state and deformed state no particle no two particle of undeformed body can occupy same position in the deformed state and similarly a particular of the undeformed body cannot occupy two position in the deformed state so this is the one to one corresponding in deformed and undeformed state so this is the undeformed state and this is the deformed state so this is about the deformation next is strain measurement the consideration the neighbor particle pqr as shown in the figure such that the pq is parallel to x2 and q is parallel to dx2 from the p similarly pr is parallel to x3 and capital r is at distance dx3 from the p and the point p has coordinate x1 x2 x3 and the coordinate of the point q and r are x1 x2 plus dx2 x3 and x1 x2 x3 plus dx3 respectively after the deformed the three particle occupies the position p dash q dash and r dash respectively the longitudinal strain is defined as the relative change in length or change in length per unit length while the shear strain is defined as the change in angle between two straight line which we are originally at right angle now the determination of the relative change in length or change in angle requires a reference state and we can take either one first the original position of the particle in undeformed state as our reference or second we may take the coordinate in the deformed state as our reference the strain measure in the first case is langrage measure and for of strain and the second case is euler's strain measurement and the equation for the langrage strain measure is final length minus initial length divided by initial length so for that the that this will be the equation and the shear strain may be written as by this equation the angle uh, r p q minus r dash p dash q where r p q is equal to 90 degree or pi by 2 therefore the shear strain is defined as a change in angle between two line which were at 90 degree in undeformed state in undeformed state it was it was at 90 degree now the stresses in the Euler measure is given by this for Euler measure the L M N are the point in the deformed state of the body and the final position of the, these three particles in the undeformed state and their position in the undeformed state is L dash M dash and N dash respectively and the strain is measured by this equation longitudinal strain is equal to final minus initial length divided by final length so the shear stress will be equal to this 1 by 2 the undeformed angle minus pi by 2 the deformed angle will be pi by 2 so this is about the strains in Euler measure so this is the end of topic thank you very much for listening me carefully have a nice day